Jason, Nick, lovely to meet you guys. Um, I guess I would like to start asking you about the one of the first lines in the film, which is as far back as I can remember, <laughs> I've always wanted to be a hooligan. Clearly, Goodfellas is a kind of influence on the film. Were there any other movies that you were thinking of while making the film as well? Well, obviously the hooligan films, like, you know, there's a few of them. Um, Rise of the Foot Soldier. I think the main one, obviously the firm, the Nick Love version of the firm is, 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 is kind of the linear, linear storyline told throughout the hooligan factory. But there's loads more. There's, uh, you know, Science of the Lambs is in there, thrown in there. Scum. Scum. The uh, Dex 4737 is 4737 Carling, mm -hmm. which, which is uh, Ray Winston's number from Scum. Um, I mean, there's loads. There's loads of references in there. So the Muppets. This not joking. I just had a really good <laughs> you time. Can, you confused me in there. You, you confused me. It yet, I thought you meant when I, when I took my took my top off. It's like Miss Piggy. Is that, is that what you're trying to? That what you're trying to say, mate? The premiere is yet to air, so you've got some time to just send that in. Yeah, we could just we could just edit some Muppet stuff in, right? I think we should. Well, sorry, I'm just. Can we? Sorry, can we just? Go, are you trying to say I'm fat? Is that what? Is this what this whole thing's? You're just big boned. Kermit, Miss Piggy, is that how you have it? <laughs> or the other way round? No, obviously I'd be Miss Piggy. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> <God>. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> okay, coming from, uh, from someone like me who doesn't really know much about football or football hooliganism, the movie's really easy to get into, so was making it accessible for viewers like me who aren't necessarily familiar with that world one of your aims when oh, making no. it? 100%. Yeah, I think with the film that obviously we made it for the fans of the genre, but Nick and Michael were the writers in the development stage. They worked really hard to try and make the comedy work on not just your hooligan level, mm. so that if you've never seen a hooligan movie, you know, there's things in there that you'll find funny. And I think mm. they did a, a cracking job at that. Yeah, no, I mean, obviously the, there's, you know, there's the, the standard spoof comedy, which is funny, you know, if, if you know the films. But I mean, someone bumping into a lamppost, I guess, is, is universally funny. It's slapstick, you know, so it, it, it's, it's nice to have a, a variety of different comedy in there. So you've got your spoof, you've got your slapstick, you've got your, you know, you've got the gags, that kind of slow burners, quick burners, you know, there's all sorts of yeah. stuff in there for, for something. Almost you could say a little something for everyone. In the first few minutes of the movie, <laughs> it really sets up its dark humour where it just is really dark drama and then in an instant, it's hilarious. Um, how much fun did you guys have with that, uh, that take on making the movie? What that opening scene? Yeah, that, that yeah, opening yeah scene. I mean, and just in general through the movie, that kind of humour. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I mean, look, you've got twenty-four days to shoot a movie. You know, this is, you know, it's, it's, it's. We don't, unfortunately, as Jason said in the previous interview, you know, we don't have, we don't have uh, the luxury of, you know, four or five months shoot like the big Amer you know, like the Americans do. Unfortunately, you know, so we yeah. shot this in twenty-four hours. So there's a lot of kind of like, yeah, we can have fun with it, but we're also here to work and and do a job. But uh, I mean, with that opening scene, I think it was more, it was all about the writing and, and when you get people like Craig and, and Tama involved and seeing it all come together and, and the stuff that they were bringing on the day, I think that's, that's where the sometimes real the best comedy, gold comes from. Sometimes the best comedy comes from expe you're not expecting it, so the unexpected. You know, so for example, when two firms go face to face and then you get the punch, but everyone's shocked at the punch, that's yeah. completely unexpected. So everyone, mm. everyone laughs at it. And I think they did a great job in the writing of it, at doing lots of little moments, like you say, the opening. You don't expect that to come, so when it comes, you're cracking up. Mm. Mm. It's great. Well, hopefully, hopefully cracking yeah, up. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully, yeah. That, that's one of my favourite parts. Another one of my favourite parts is during this really sad, morose montage, <laughs> someone mistakes your character, Dex, for a letterbox. Yeah. And it's just a massive laugh out loud moment. Well, that's a, yeah. That, um, sorry, that, that, I mean that is a spoof moment, obviously from the firm where the uh, I, I can't remember her name now. She says, "Oh, you you look like a pillar box." No, no. Oh, it's it's, it's Paul Anderson. Paul Anderson's character. He, he Bex says to says to the character says, "Oh, do, you don't think I look like a post box, do I, or a pillar box?" You know, and that's kind of where that came yeah. from. So little 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 nudges. What what are your guys' favourite parts, like personally? From the movie, even uh, making it or just watching it back. I really like the uh, the the Goodfellas steady cam shot that we do in the Iron Hoof. Uh, I think that that's uh, again, it's an alright bit of writing from you boys. Cheers. Um, and I love the sort of we've done a London nod to Mr. Martin Scorsese. Um, yeah. And then obviously my favourite line is, um, "Have you met my mate Stanley?" Which is from the Football Factory, and he goes, "No, nah, mate, you met my little friend Makita." Mm. I love that. I think my favourite my favourite scene is uh, is when I say to when uh, Dex and Danny are. Uh, are talking and and he he doesn't want him to come to the final ruck and there's we have this beautiful score and it's kind of really melo melodramatically played by Jason and myself and it kind of like you know I don't want you're just a kid and I just think it's kind of well written and well acted 
Sorry to. <laughs> well, proper serious, then, weren't you? Yeah, no, I just I didn't want I didn't know how much we could big each other up. So. Yeah. Well, what did you see uh, in, in Jason to to cast him in the film? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what did you see in Jason to cast him in the film? Well, he's really he's, well, he's really short, so I just kind of saw right over him. Really, I just I needed someone short. Oh, so <laughs> that is that is awkward. All right, what what made you want to work? Well, now. <laughs> No idea. No, uh, I love the fact that Nick is so passionate and so um, so on the money and so focused that as an actor you sort of can trust in that. And uh, and yeah, and um, he's an half decent guy. Well, well. well, you know. So listen, all jokes aside, Jason's a fantastic actor. He's been in this. He's been in the game a long, long time. And uh, you know, when you're writing for someone you know, because I always had him in mind to play the part of Danny. So when you're writing for someone you know, it makes it a little bit easier. And when you see that person bring the, the gold from the paper to the screen, you know you made the right choice. So, I mean, just have to see the movie to know that. You know, J J Jason is, his character, Danny, unfortunately, he's the straight man. Yeah. So on paper, he doesn't really have that many gags on paper. But when Jason, when Jason brought, you know, the character to life, you know, with the little looks to the side. I mean, in the script, it just says Danny reacts. Yeah, that's it. Danny reacts. So it's down to the actor to react. And that's where the comedy comes from. Honest, so. When you're getting notes like Jason... I like what you're doing, but if you just do it better... <laughs> yeah. act, act better and stop messing up my movie was actually the, the note yeah. that kind of went throughout the whole... I mean, yeah. the actor wants that. <laughs> yeah. So, I'm, I'm there if you ever need me again, mate. You, well, maybe. Uh, there's a part in the movie where something ridiculous happens and you look straight at the camera. Was that your own... No, no, no. Oh, no. Oh, that's no, not that's, one. That's no, that yours. was mine, yeah. Oh, okay. I wanted to do that a few times. Um, we, we actually did play that a few times in a few different scenes. And I just and I knew I was only going to use it once. Yeah. I just didn't know where the right moment was to use it. And uh, that particular instance that you're talking about happened just to be the right moment for it. And then, obviously, Martin Scorsese came along with Wall Street and, got, and did the whole thing. Exactly, and yeah. Sorry. And he kind of ruined it for us a little bit. But, uh, <laughs> but no, uh, you know, it's... it's, it's because, like I said, Jason is the audience. So when he looks down the barrel of the camera, he is breaking every time he breaks the fourth wall, whether he's looking down the barrel or not, you know, because he, things are happening all around him and he's the only one to see them. Everyone else is oblivious to them. So he's, 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 he's breaking the convention all the time anyway. So why not just go the whole way and just look down the camera right to the audience and give them a little wink? And I think, I think a lot of people appreciate that, you know? Both your backgrounds in film and TV have been, you know, pretty much firmly British. Um, Going back, you mentioned Hollywood, you know, in America, you've got loads of times to shoot. Have you ever wondered about going down the Hollywood route or do you think Britain's your future? Well, obviously, Stephen and Martin call me up all the time and I've just been busy, you know, but I, at one point it will happen. We will make it work, obviously. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's just a nightmare. I mean, I've got the geezers on block now. They just keep ringing, they're ringing, ringing, you know. On the Facebook <laughs> and the tweeting as well. That's just taking as well on the level. But uh, no, seriously, for a minute, obviously, yeah, I think... Um, for a minute? I, for a minute. Seriously, for a minute. Just for a minute. Not really like that. No, I, I think we, me and Nick, want to make films that we want to, you know, commer we like making commercial films that people yeah. want to see and can go to a big audience. So obviously, one day, you know, we'd be honoured to get out there and do some. I'd like to be in, you know, I'd like for us to be invited out there. You know, and there's a lot of British actors trying to make it out there, and, and all respect to them, but. Mm. I've always been of the been of the belief that if you make your bones in this country, you, one day you will be invited out there. If you make if you keep making quality and you keep making films that people see in this country, you know the Americans are going to take notice and they're going to go. You know what? These guys are on the ball. These guys are doing stuff. So let's 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 invite them over. And at the end of the day, I think we'd always make films in this country because this is where we live. You know, and yeah. and and. And even if we are making films in America, we'd like, you know, we'd like to bring some American stars over here for a change rather than them bringing us over there. You know, why not, you know, why not do it the other way around? Bring, yeah. bring some of them over here and, and make some British films with, 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 with some A-listers. Why not? Well, maybe not A-listers, you know, yeah. B or C it, on, tops. On that um, note, Green Street, Elijah Wood, American. It, in my mind, Green Street didn't really work, even though that was an A-list American, you know. Mm -hmm came over and did a, a British movie. What, what do you think you could do differently? Well, I'd, ca I'd, I'd cast him as the Charlie Hunnam role, straight off the bat. So cast no, I, think, I think the thing <laughs> is, is that, uh, is that uh, the, it has to fit the story. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, we, we, we work in development and stuff all the time, and there's, and there's some places where it just feels right for an American to come, American to come in. And I think sometimes the British films go, we need to sell this movie, we need an American. There's no reason why I'd be in this film. It doesn't matter, just bring him in. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think some of the stuff that we're doing, it, it just feels right and it just fits that, um, you know, that, that, that America will play the part. So I think it just has to be right for, for, for the project. Yeah. So maybe on Green, I mean, to be honest, I, I quite like the movie, so. Oh, I, like the, um, I like the movie. And, like the movie. and I'd cast Elijah if he's, if he's, if he's bored. Then just... I, I would definitely cast you, though, in the lead, though. 
In that movie? Yeah, in that movie. Why not? It's already, it's already happened, isn't it? It's already come out. Green Street 4. Well, if, it's, cool. if, if there's any rumours floating about, call me. Plus, Elijah Wood pretty much looks exactly the same now that he did. Like, I know, that's like, that's freaky. He's like, he's no, like, what's that? Cameo. He's like Pharrell, isn't it? Like vampires, they just don't age. Like, what the hell's that about? <laughs> yeah. It's a conspiracy here, I think. <laughs> Look at me. Yeah. I'm 19.